Hey guys, Sableye here, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are here with a post-game match analysis versus Sebastian Obaldia, and this was for World Cup. This was Canada versus Costa Rica for week two of the qualifier stage, and I say we just jump into things here. All right, so they're finishing up their team, but most importantly, guys, I am going to be running Cal Calyrex Palkia. What? I was going to say Calyrex Palkia Ice. That's not a thing. Calyrex Ice and Palkia, just the standard Trick Room stuff, and they're going to pull up with... Calyrex, Shadow, and Zacian. So, my main priority here is looking at team preview is if I get Trick Room up and can deal with Amoongus, I'm winning the game. That's, this is my concept. It's not as easy as it looks because I can't go with any sort of Calyrex mode, right? The Porygon 2 mode isn't as solid just because they have the, the option for Big Aleki. They can immediately put me to sleep. And then if I end up needing to stop sleep by setting room with Porygon 2, well, next thing you know, I've got Finny P2 on the field. And I, I don't think that's a very good line for me. Like, that line to me just doesn't seem like it's going to do anything for me. You know, I'm just kinda, I'd rather just go for it, you know, get the uh, get the damage. You know what I'm saying? Get Have damage. At least have some sort of pressure in Trick Room. But, as you can see, I'm super, super indecisive here. I think I did end up settling on Amoongus, if I'm correct, just because... Did I? I don't even know. Did I go P2? I think I might have went P2. Yeah, I went P2. Okay. I went P2. I don't know if that's the correct four here, because like I said, I do need to stop sleep, which is a little bit annoying, but I do expect some sort of... Uh, like I said, I expect the Amoongus to be slow, so I can just kind of not set up Trick Room, kill the Amoongus kind of thing, and then deal with Thermons later, get Trick Room up mid-game, which is always something I do, don't mind with this team. This team is very good at being able to position to where you can get Trick Room up to win the end game. So right here, I see something like this, and I'm like, this is perfect. I could not have asked for a better lead. Right? Zashin can really go ahead and do whatever it wants here. The Amoongus is what scares me, right? There's a chance that I try to click Fake Out Trick Room, so you know the score is probably going into Palkia here. So I figure, you know what? In a scenario like this, I can actually get pretty aggressive. I can say, you know what, the Zashian doesn't bother me since it's minus one. If I just max Palkia and double into this Amoongus, I'm getting massive damage into the Amoongus slot, and they can't really do much about that. So, I decided, you know what, let's max Palkia here. No real reason to play this super, super slow. Should have tried, could have tried for Trick Room. Right, but like I said, I figure if I try for Trick Room, I can't fake out both, and then Palkia, I'm not sure if it can take a, a neutral play rough or anything like that. So I have to Dynamax here just to survive. It would have been close depending on the Zashian spread. But on an offensive team like they had, I wasn't super confident with it. The, the Zashian does settle down, does go for that substitute. Which is actually really perfect because I now worm with it. So yeah, they have a Zashian on the field, but it is now minus one attack. And Amoongus is going to survive, which is a tad bit unfortunate. But it is, it is what it is. I did double into it here, and I'm like, this is a perfect turn. I'm super, super happy with this turn. Flare Blood... No, they're faster with Amoongus, and the Spore goes off into my Palkia. So now I've really gained nothing out of this. I'm going to lose guaranteed at least one turn of Dynamax, and Flare Blitz is just going to finish off this Amoongus. So this is good and bad for me. I feel with a team like this, once you have the information you need, you're, able, you're better able to make the plays that are going to get you Trick Room and they're going to win you the game. So seeing fast Amoongus here is really, really good, because all that confirms is I just need Trick Room. If I get Trick Room up, my Calyrex will be slower. My Instant, as we saw right there, is slower. Everything in Trick Room is going to be slower for me, which means I'm going to be moving first. So all I have to do here, even in the end of game one, is find a way to get Trick Room up still. Right? They're going to max the Aleki. And if they're correct, they should be targeting the Instant. But there's no reason for me to switch the Instant out or make any sort of pivot. We've already got the Zashian down to minus one. If they target the instant, great, so be it. If they don't target the instant, I'm able to get a free party shot. I think I could party shot. But, or maybe I broke a sub, I don't know what I did. Either way, I've, I'm pretty confident instant is going down here, as they're just going to let Palkia take an extra turn of sleep. Yep. Into the instant. Instant, I'm kind of hoping at this point may take it, may survive. But the uh, instant going down does confirm the life orb on the Aleki, which you guys will see shortly. And I believe Zashian just clicked play rough or something like that. I think it just clicked play rough. But yeah, not, not an ideal position, right? We've got our Dynamax. It's burning turns of its own Dynamax because it's asleep right now. And I think this is a lot of just being, uh, being uh, not necessarily pranked, but being caught off guard, I should say, by the, uh, by the immediate, uh, 
by the immediate fast uh, Amoongus. So now it's a question of do I bring in Calyrex or Porygon 2? I bring in Calyrex because I don't want to bring in Porygon 2 and simply have them just double that slot. I want to bait something into that slot so maybe Palkia can survive and I'm going to be protecting Calyrex. Right? I want to bait them to say, yeah, Calyrex is a threat here. We better hit this thing. Right? Whereas Porygon 2 doesn't really do that, but it does do that, but it just can't protect. Right? So Porygon 2 is going to do that. They're going to kill the P2 and then if Palkia stays asleep, we get nothing. I believe I protected here, or I made the play saying that they're going to... I don't know, this is tough, right? Because, like, I have to make the call of whether or not they're actually going to hit the Calyrex, or if they're going to hit the Palkia. Now, Zashian is minus two, so if they're going to double Calyrex, they can go ahead and do so. But they're going to go Max Lightning. It does go into the Palkia, so they are going to split their damage. Palkia is not going to survive, and as we know that the Calyrex here will survive this turn because it is minus one for Zashian. So we're just going to be chilling. We're going to be tanking that hit pretty, pretty well. And we're going to get our Trick Room up right now. Zashin's going to go for that Behemoth Blade. Calyrex, please tank, buddy. You know you want to tank this. And Calyrex absolutely eats that for breakfast. Still definitely most most likely a damage roll. But we do get the... Uh, we do get the... Uh, what am I calling it? What am I trying to say? <laughs> we, get the, uh, we get the Trick Room up and our Weakness Policy. So now we're in a spot where we can just simply click Glacial Lance. My main concern now is Porygon 2 isn't going to break the substitute with a foul play because, as I mentioned, this Zashian is minus, uh, is minus one attack. So I have to go for it. There's really no reason for me not to. I've already procced my policy. I have to just Glacial Lance because it will just kill the Aleki. There's no reason for me not to. I could try to protect to call the Max Aleki Guard, but I think Glacial Lance is just a better play here because there's also a chance that seeing that they now need a neutral roll or a high roll to kill me, you know? So I think even maybe a little bit higher than a neutral roll, I don't know, on my Calyrex. So even if they protect the Leki, right, and I have my Calyrex around, I think I'm perfectly safe because, like, I shouldn't be dying. Yeah, I mean, I might die to a high roll or a mid or a upper mid roll, right? But, like, at this point, I don't know if that's a roll, if they're just super bulky under Zashian. So I figured I'm going to play it. A Leki goes down. And we're going to see Zashian come out. Zashian is going to just click Behemoth Blade into the Calyrex. And at this point, it's basically if I survive, I probably win the game. If I don't survive, I probably lose the game. And that's going to decide game one right here. Because Porygon probably cannot be out damaging the Zashian at this point. I mean, it can probably out recover it, but there's still another Mon in the back. So I'm going to need a second piece here to win this game. And unfortunately, Calyrex is going to drop to that. So a little bit unfortunate there with the, the damage rolls there, but... I'd like to say more often than not, that's picking up a two-shot. I feel like they got a super low roll in the first one, and in the second one, they just got the new, the normal roll, and it probably picked up like that, so there's no surprise there. Now, seeing the Calyrex is one of those ones where it's like, okay, I could actually probably maybe do this. Zashian's minus one. It's not doing a whole lot of damage. Let's just start spamming foul play. Let's get rid of the Calyrex while I still can. Alright, get rid of the Calyrex, make this a 1v1 Zashian versus P2, maybe stall it out, maybe recover, maybe take this to timer. There is plenty of opportunities for Porygon to still be able to pull this off. We catch the Zashian protecting, we're going to get our foul play straight into the Calyrex, which unfortunately isn't going to pick up the knockout because it's not boosted, Calyrex doesn't actually have much of an attack stat here. And Calyrex is going to click the trick button and going to reveal choice specs, which is really really important information for me moving forward but however it does mean this game is a hundred percent over now i will follow play the calyrex and maybe pray the end game is going to be able to be porygon versus Zashian, and maybe maybe just maybe they won't be doing enough damage right but you're going to see on this turn they just do too much damage and unfortunately porygon 2 is uh you know not uh, not quite capable of uh bulking this one out as without the without the recover that is right because like the behemoth blade this, keep in mind this has no eviolite right if i had an eviolite right now and they didn't have trick under specs calyrex i am very confident i win this game because look at that damage that is non eviolite p2 and i just tanked that behemoth blade like i would have eventually out damaged them and they wouldn't have been able to heal up i would have won this game without the specs but i saw a lot of good things right i saw a lot of important information going into game two with when you play something like a really slow mechanical team, knowing that information gives you opportunities, right? I feel comfortable still winning this set because I know what I need to do now. I need to get into Trick Room, no problems, because I don't have to worry about the Amoongus because once I'm in Trick Room, 
I can just kill it beforehand, right? It's probably going to be focused at. It hasn't been revealed, but it's very likely to be focused at there. And uh, obviously, it's probably not going to kill. But like, right? I've been given the information. I get into trick room. Calyrex cannot protect, right? It's scarf. If I get into trick room, I'm I'm set. You know, we're all good. Anyways, Behemoth Blade is going to come out and finish off this Porygon too, right? But the information I got in this game, despite losing, I'm more than comfy here. Yeah, I lost game one. Like, I don't know. A lot of people I, I talk to, and I, I talk to people, and they say they lose game one. And, like, when you lose game one with, like, a hyper offense team, I feel like it's very spooky, right? Because, like, maybe it's because your reads weren't working. Maybe it's because they just outbulked you. Maybe it's not working well, right? Which, and I mean, the adapt the adaptation options you have, you probably have a few, but it's not as, I don't know, it doesn't feel as comfortable. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just crazy and I'm super, super comfortable. Well, I know I am. I'm super comfortable in position-based games. So being able to play a position-based team, uh, team like this just always feels possible once I know the information. So we're going to go into game two. And I figure there's no reason for them to fix what ain't broke right so you know you're probably assuming they're gonna be bringing much of the same and I said you know what I can do the exact same thing I'm more than capable of bringing Incineroar Palkia with Calyrex and this time I figured P2 didn't really do a lot they were specs onto Calyrex with Trick it wasn't really worth my P2 coming I said let's bring Finny help deal with some of this Amoongus stuff a little bit better especially if they're playing to late game Aleki because I can bring Finny into back lead Palkia lead Palkia Incin get Finny in and click Trick Room if I have the opportunity to do that. So that's what we exactly what we're going to decide to do. I do bring Finny this time and I am going to bring in the Calyrex because Calyrex does go crazy here in the end game. Right? There's no secret that Calyrex is putting in absolutely mad amounts of work right here if we get in the Trick Room and if we can get it going. So it's a little bit of a spooky concept though, right? Because we're not in the best of positions depending on what they lead with, right? Because even if they go with the same thing with the Zacian and the Amoongus, if they simply double my Palkia with a play rough and a Thunderbolt or whatever, not a Thunderbolt, or like a Pollen Puff or something, Palkia probably dies to that if I want a hard switch in. But we're going to see a very, very aggressive lead from my opponent. So we've got Life Orb Regilecki and Specs Calyrex on the field right now. And this is one of those ones, this is a turn I pondered a little bit because... It's one of those ones where it's like, they just absolutely blow me up right here, right? And I have no clue what I'm supposed to do. I do not have a switch in. I can't save my instant. They probably still have the dog in the back, which is really, really spooky. And it's one of those ones where I have to find a way to take a piece. And my best way to take a piece, as dumb as this sounds, is to max the Incineroar turn one and take out the Calyrex and see if they give me Trick Room in exchange for that. Because to me, they know my game plan is get Trick Room up, right? And I know my game plan is get Trick Room up, so they should be trying to stop the Trick Room. With the, I, the fact that I can't fake out the Calyrex, and the fact that I can't fake out the Aleki if it goes large, I should be capable of trying to get Trick Room up here. And I personally think they, they misplay a little bit here, right? I think they have to realize Palkia on these kinds of teams don't carry Protect very often. So they're going to Dynamax here, and I think their best play is get rid of Palkia, get rid of Palkia, right? Which is why I didn't want to max the Palkia this turn, but instead I'm going to max the Instant here. And the Instant now with the Dynamax should be able to take any sort of combination from this Regilecki plus the Calyrex. There shouldn't be anything they can really do outside of maybe max Lightning plus Mudshot. But like even that, I don't know if it's going to take out the Knockout. But Instant is going to Dynamax right here, be able to compete right here. And this is where I think we win the game. Because the Max Lightning actually goes into the Incineroar, which you guys will see in a second. And with that, as long as Palkia can survive anything... As long as Palkia can survive anything... Look how much damage that does. Like, that is absolutely ridiculous amounts of damage. This Pokemon is crazy. Like, Aleki is just crazy, guys. And the problem with the slow team is I can't really outpace and kill it before it attacks. Aleki is getting its attacks off. And that play right there was super questionable. Like... Okay, so they're specs, right? You had so many more opportunities to just do massive damage there that I don't know why you wouldn't take it. So you're probably Astro Barrage, you're probably Psychic Move, and then you're Snarl and Trick. That's completely fair. I get that, but why not just Astro Barrage and take massive damage there? Especially if you're expecting the instant to go down. 
But I guess maybe they were calling me Max and Palkia again turn one, which I guess is completely fair, right? But I don't know. I didn't want to Max Palkia because I honestly thought Max Lightning from Aleki plus the Specs Astro Barrage might have taken out a Max Palkia, right? But now they've given me Trick Room. We know our instant is slower, and now I'm pretty well, pretty safe. I get Palkia. Uh, do I get Palkia out? I don't remember. Oh uh, no, I, I don't get Palkia out because we're in Electric Terrain. I don't need to. Uh, I don't need to switch in the. Uh, I don't need to switch anything in, so they don't need to spore. They can spore me all they want. I don't need to switch into Finny. They can't spore because of the electric terrain that they set up for themselves, which is why I think their game one game plan was a little bit better for them, because then they could have spore pressure, right? Amoongus's big thing is being able to pressure spore, redirection, and being able to protect when you know your opponent's going to be scared of it and buy you turns that way. Like Amoongus can buy you turns without ne even needing to click Spore or Rage Powder just because your opponent needs to stop Spore or Rage Powder, right? So without by taking the Spore off the field, I was super safe here. Amoongus pressures me to... No it doesn't pressure me at all. Max Flare is going to come on out. Massive damage into this Amoongus. We do finally reveal that it is indeed Focus Sash, which kind of had suspicions. Normally when you see a super fast Amoongus like we did in game one, you do generally expect to Focus Sash, but that does confirm it. And this Earth Power is just going to clean it up. And because I darkness turn one, this Palkia is kind of pretty. I'm pretty. I'm sitting kind of pretty, right? Like I'm not overly concerned about it. And they're just gonna max lightning. And you know the dogs in the back, so goodbye instant. That's fine. But like I said, because I darkness turn one, this Regilecki is stuck in here at a minus one special defense stat, giving me absolutely perfect, perfect positioning. Because even though I'm minus one because of the Snarl, I can just Earth Power that when it comes out of Dynamax. Or just simply double into it. Now the question is, do I bring in Finny or Calyrex? And I believe I bring in Calyrex. Because I don't necessarily want to reveal the Finny right now. Finny does, just comes in and dies to the... To the Aleki anyways. So I think Calyrex should be the switch in here. Just comes on in, bring, brings in, and puts on pressure in Trick Room, right? I need to get damage up while we're in room. Getting out of room without damage is detrimental to this team. You need to put some sort of damage on the board. To be able to either A, you either need to get do big damage in room or position to get room back up to do more big damage. And in this case, I have a very, very opportune time to just take massive damage here and take KOs. So this is one of those ones where I feel like getting rid of the Aleki probably gives me the best chance. I'm going to protect the Calyrex in case they want to Behemoth Blade into that. They think the Palkia is minus one. It's not too big of a threat. The Rex, in my opinion, is a little bit more threatening to them. And I just simply try to Earth Power, I think into the Zashian for some chip damage to put it in range of a high horsepower on future turns. I figure there's a chance this Regilecki might try to max guard. They know it's one of their win conditions here if they can get it out of Trick Room. Zashian less likely to protect because more people go after the dog and then the dog tries to normally just be the one to protect, right? So I get this call dead on as Regilecki does go for that max guard. Earth Power is going to come on out into the Zashian. Despite being minus one, still going to be a two hit knockout, which is super super clutch and they blade into the Calyrex and I don't know I just feel really really good about this these turns right here right I don't read well into hyper offense too often right but playing this game this game too I don't know every call just seemed to work for me like every time I made a call it worked right now Zashian has to protect here earth power goes into Aleki it will pick it up Aleki is good, but unfortunately the defensive stats for Regilecki are not good enough, and Palkia will pick up the Aleki here, and it's a matter of... There's one turn left of Trick Room now. So I could call the Zashian going for the double protect, right? But in my opinion, that costs me the game. I have no reason not to just launch attacks. If they go for the double protect and they get it, okay, cool, because the following turn, Earth Power either, earth, either kills it, or High Horsepower either, either kills it. Same concept this turn. I might as well just double attack right if i wanted to really really read the double protect i could but it would be a misplay reading it even if i got it right it would still be the wrong play because there's no reason not to when both of the pokemon on my field just kill the zashian i have no reason to go for any sort of double trick room play right there i don't need to get fancy zashian goes down and the most important part i didn't have to reveal type of any and I think not revealing Tapu Fini is super important for me there because what that allows me to get, it, get at is them potentially thinking, hey, maybe I still didn't bring Tapu Fini. Maybe they can go back to Amoongus in game, like they did in game one, which is kind of what I banked on here. And I figured, you know what? 
I think because I was able to successfully win game two without revealing Tapu Fini, they may say, oh, maybe he just brought the same four again, right? Because I brought the other things the same, right? And because of that, I figured there's a chance they go back to that Amoongus lead. And now, granted, maybe, like, this is just post-game commentary thoughts here, but maybe that doesn't work, right? Maybe I have to realize that that Amoongus lead in game one only worked. And I know that Amoongus lead in game one only worked because they were fast sash. And I had really didn't expect it. But now that I expect it, I'm pretty confident they're, they are aware that that lead isn't going to work for them anymore. Which is something I should consider in this game three, but I didn't. Right? That's something I need to realize saying, hey, I'm aware I got pranked by that lead in game one. Right? But I need to be aware that they're also aware that they pranked me by that lead in game one. They now know that I'm not going to let that happen again. They have to, right? I just don't, I don't know, it's, it's really weird, right? Because, like, I don't want to get pranked by it again, so I kind of have to do, kind of have to expect it. But at the same time, even if they lead it, as long as I keep Finny in the back, I'm good. Which is why I did keep Finny again. You'll see in a second, I do end up locking in Finny instead of going back to my game one. Just because I don't want to make, I, I want to make sure I'm not getting pranked by that lead. You know? Gotta make sure I'm not getting pranked there. And this is super, super shaky. Because it's one of those ones where it's like, I think I can just do the instant Pelkey again. But if I go instant Pelkey again into Regilecki and Calyrex again, what is going to happen? Like, in my opinion, there's just so much 50-50. And I don't love the term 50-50, guys. It's just there's so many different things that could happen that could just blow up my side of the field. It's really, really bad. Because I could max Pelkey at turn 1 if they want to do that again. And they max lightning instant this time. Okay, again, they max in lightning instant again. Well, well, now what? Right? Maybe they will just max Pelky. Maybe they'll max lightning into the Pelky this time and kill me as I max my instant. Right? There's a lot of options there that I don't necessarily love. It, it would definitely be a super, super tough call if that's what they were going to lead. But I am very much so expecting the Amoongus to come back out as a lead. Like I said, Amoongus is one of those mods that puts pressure on without needing to put pressure on. And by, give, by taking that away in the last game, by leading Aleki with the Max Lightning, it was able to, it let me just kill there, right? Amoongus was probably their quote-unquote Trick Room answer, or one of them. And because they had the Lightning up, they were never able to uh, get through. And this is not a lead I love to see. This is not a lead I love to see. They have Snarl pressure. They have Max Lando potential. This is really, 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 really spooky. So it's more of a question of how offensive is this Lando? And we're going to see what item they are here in a second. They are actually going to be White Herb in a, a minute. You guys will see that. But uh, Insimidate going to come on out. And the big concern here is seeing White Herb. Because to me, I don't know. This is a super hyper offensive team. Like very, very aggressive. So I feel that this Landorus isn't going to be super bulky, right? They're going to have, they're just going to try and pick up knockouts. Right? And this is one of those ones where I'm expecting some sort of snarl. Maybe a Snarl and a Rock Slide. Maybe a Snarl and a Max Quake into my Palkia. So I can't get Trick Room up, right? They saw what happened when Trick Room went up. Right? They do not want Trick Room up again. This time I'm expecting maybe some sort of Snarl or an Astro Barrage. And just a double into my Palkia. So I want to max the Palkia. Make sure I'm getting through this. And Max Geyser should pick up this non-bulky Landers even after a Max Quake in my opinion. But it is what it is. And I throw chop because I'm saying if they double into Palkia... Palkia can survive and Throat Chop picks up the Calyrex. We are in an absolute phenomenal position. Despite not necessarily getting up any big damage, right? But, however, they do hard switch into Zacian and that makes this turn really, really awkward for me. As now I'm stuck on the field with an instant for the future turns and can no longer really safely intimidate the Zacian. The good news, I do get uh, to survive if they quake the instant because I am Chookaberry and without the unnerve on the field from Calyrex. We are kind of just gaming, but we've got, hmm, right. So the lander is going to just drop a max quake here after I max my Palkia, of course. Obviously, Palkia is going to be the slower of the two Pokemon, but as you see by the Dynamax, but I expect it to be slower anyways, and I do expect a max quake coming on out here. There's no reason for this lander not to quake, whether it clicks it into the instant or the Palkia. It's going to be doing massive damage, right? They were White Herb. I can't intimidate it. And they do decide to click Max Quake into the instant. And this is where I'm like, if I would have had this turn right, 
I could have been such a better position. Like, had I just clicked parting shot there, I don't know what my opponent does to get back in this game. Because then I have Intimidate to switch back in, and I just win the game. Because Palkia just starts going crazy. Right? At this point, though, there's still a silver lining of the fact that I still think Palkia is going to absolutely shred this uh, Landorus. I still think I shred this Landorus. And Landorus all the way down. No, it lives on one. So Landorus going to stick around on the field a little bit longer. And... Back to what I was saying earlier in the uh, in the set, guys. It's one of those ones where I always feel comfortable if I can find ways to win, to get Trick Room up. So my end game here is already decided that I am ignoring this Landers because if I let their fast on the like their fast mode on the field, I don't get Trick Room up ever. There's just no. No way I get Trick Room up if their fast mode's on the field. So I need to keep their slow mode on the field so that I can am capable of getting Trick Room up. And by slow mode, I mean Lander is dashing is not slow. It's just not as hyper offense of the other parts of their team. Right? So Instant's going to come on back. We're going to get Finny. And I am immediately setting up for Fake Out into the slot that's beside Landorus and a Trick Room from my Calyrex to set up four turns and a big Trick Room sweep in the end game after all the Dynamaxes and stuff are over. So they're going to drop the max guard here. Sorry, I'm going to drop the max guard here. Which arguably was a really rough call as Zacian does go for that substitute. Basically getting a substitute for free which is really, really good. And they do actually quake. They just said let's make sure this instant goes down which is completely fair. Right? And Finny not going to appreciate all that, that max quake too, super, super well. But it's still at a point where I can just let Finny go down, let Calyrex come in. Then let Palkia die as I protect Calyrex. If they target Palkia, great. I get my it, then I get my instant and I take a trick room. If they don't target Palkia, this is like three turns ahead. Um, if they don't target Palkia, then we're fine, right? I do attack the Landorus there. Did I attack? No, I think I changed my mind, right? I decided to go back and quake. I definitely leave the Landorus because, like I'm saying, my win con is leaving the Landorus on the field and just not getting flinched by a rock slide to set up room. So I decide to break the sub, and I just go for a Nature's Madness because that will also break the substitute. So my game plan here is let's just break the sub. Right, Zacian is going to go straight for that player off. I was expecting them to double Palkia here. I, I, I truly was. I had just max guarded. Right, but they do go for the max quake. And it, this one does go into Finny. So we actually do successfully break this up and still have Trick Room pressure. Which is really, really good for the future turns. Because it kind of just forces them into me, right? So now Finny goes down. And Zacian gets hit by the max quake here. So I can't bring in Calyrex. I, I could bring in Calyrex here. But I can't bring in Calyrex and just click Trick Room this time. Because if they simply something like Earthquake, uh, Rock Slide or Earthquake and Behemoth Blade, I'm gone. Even if I hard switch an instant, Calyrex is dying to that because Behemoth Blade just does too much damage. Right? And then I'm losing my instant and those are pieces I don't want to use. So, like I was saying, the best play for me is to bring in Calyrex, protect my Calyrex, and try to Trick Room. Their best play out of this was probably some sort of hard switch into Calyrex or maybe even a substitute. Well, their uh, Landorus kills the uh, Palkia, which is also completely fair. But I think they have to respect the fact that Calyrex is on the field. Right? So like I said, I am just going to make the safe play. I'm going to protect with the Calyrex and let Palkia go down. Right? Their best play here is to Earthquake and uh, bring in uh, Calyrex. And this is why I'm taking so long to make this turn. It is my best play to just try and let Calyrex go down. Try and let, sorry, try to let Palkia go down and get Trick Room up with the Palkia, and then if not, I bring in the Instant. There's no other play I have here, right? But their best play is honestly, and probably their only correct play. Ah, uh, there's a few correct plays, but their best play would be to make that play kill Palkia and bring in Calyrex, because they know I have to get Room up to win this game, right? There's no way I win this game without getting Room up, so I think their best play is to go into Calyrex Shadow here. I think that just secures the game. It just shuts down anything I can really do. And if they don't, I mean, like, they Earthquake, they, they can take their minus one. Their Calyrex will be perfectly fine to survive that. And my Calyrex, of course, is going to protect. But thankfully, they don't make that play, which is really, 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 really nice. Behemoth Blade, of course, going into the Calyrex and Rock Slide. They do decide to risk the Rock Slide, by the way, guys. So Palkia could have simply dodged that, but it's fine. They hit, the, they, they hit it, right? They didn't want to Earthquake there, which is completely fair. And Instant comes in. Okay. Now, this turn right here is a massive toss-up. In my opinion, 
they're comfortable winning this game if they get rid of Incineroar. Because if I fake out Zacian, which is 100% my play, I fake out Zacian and they're going to... If they Rock Slide and miss the Flint on Calyrex, they lose. But if they Earthquake, kill the Incin, then they... And the way they've played it, they probably have a Moongus in the back again. So if they Rock... If they Earthquake, kill the Incin, I think they double Incin, personally. They should be trying to kill the Incineroar here. So with that, I say to myself, okay, I get the Fake Out into Zacian, and they're going to Earthquake. If they Earthquake, because they have to double, because I could simply Fake Out Landers. They can't protect Zacian and give me a free switch, because that also doesn't help them. So I'm like, okay, if they Earthquake, they're putting themselves in Glacial Lance range, and that actually gives me an opportunity in the end game. So I'm going to Fake Out into the Zacian here for a little bit of chip. And we are going to see Zashian Flint, of course. Could have been a substitute, could have been a player off into instant. I think I have to hit that Zashian slot. And we do see the Earthquake. Unfortunately, they crit their own Zashian. And now we lose the game of Pokemon. They also crit my instant. But the crit on instant, I, I have a tough time believing that an offensive Lando like that doesn't pick up that knockout anyways. But the real reason I lose this game is that crit on instant. Uh, sorry, is that crit on Zashian. If they don't crit Zashian there, they have nothing they can do. They can't switch something in for the Lando, right? So they have to protect Zashian the following turn and swap Lando out as their best play. But then I'm taking massive damage, and at that point I win. Now, unfortunately here, I thought I set that up very, very well after a very bad turn one. Because after a bad turn one, I was able to say, no, nope, I'm getting Trickrum up, I've got my endgame, and I had my endgame. Because that Zashian would have survived in the red, it would have been in range of Glacial Lance, and I could have spammed Glacial Lance for four turns and won the game. I could have spammed Glacial Lance for 4 turns and win the game. Their best play would have been to protect Zacian, swap out Lando into either Calyrex or Amoongus, probably the Calyrex because you don't want your Amoongus to go to Sash, and then you bring your Lando back in and hope that Zacian can survive the Glacial Lance. But unfortunately here, as you guys are going to see, that this Glacial Lance is not going to pick up Calyrex. It actually would have been super close had it picked up at plus 1 as well. Looking at that damage call, I don't know if it does. Now granted, this one could have, this initial one could have been a low roll. Maybe it does pick up that plus one, but Specs Calyrex guys is just going to finish this one up for them. And it's just unfortunate that they had to crit their Zashian, because I do think that I might have been able to pull that one back. Like, I really am confident in pulling that one back with Glacial Lances if they don't crit their own Zashian. Because there's a chance that they just let both go down, right? Or they have to switch something in so that they can recycle their Intimidates. And I think at that point, we're in a very, very optimal spot. Now, they do technically at that point... Let me just pause this before it uh, recycles on you guys and the screen goes black. But, I let me get this straight. I do think at that point, the game's not over, right? If they don't crit Zacian, right? They just Let's just say they protect their Zacian, let their landers go down, which I think is a fair play, right? The following turn, what they're going to do is I guess they're going to let... Yeah, no, I guess they still win, right? Because if they do have Amoongus in the back, they protect Zacian, let Lando go down. Amoongus comes in, I Glacial Lance, they spore me. And then Calyrex just comes in after I kill. So I guess at that point, my best play would be... There wouldn't be a best play, right? Like, once they killed Incident, it was over, right? I think. Right? Because I had no way to break... The, they were, they would have had a smart... I would have needed them to mess up, right? But granted, with four turns of Trick Room, they very well could have messed up. They could have tried to pivot around more so than they needed to. Obviously, they did have guaranteed win lines. But... You never really know. When you're in Trick Room with Calyrex, you can always hope. But assuming it was Sash and Mungus in the back, if they just protect and let Landorus go down looking back on this now, they do actually just take the W because then they just sack the Zashian, let Amoongus live on Sash, get the Spore off. Zashian is gone. Uh, Calyrex coming on in. And I'm guaranteed to turn asleep and we get to the same endgame that we just had. So, did the crit under Zashian really cost me that game? Maybe. It definitely was a nail in the coffin. But it would have been nice to see. Maybe maybe they can slip up on the end game. But very well played to Sebastian there. And uh, with that, guys, I am going to stop rambling. By the way, guys, also make sure you check out Victory Road's YouTube channel. They have a mad amount of matches up on that channel. Definitely go check them out if you're looking for some great Pokemon content over there. Uh, link will either be above me or down in the description. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. But uh, with that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will catch you guys in a future video.